page as we reference in our video, please tell our viewers what you've put together for the Psychological Toolkit. So we put together a compilation for the Psychological Toolkit for the pandemic, and it includes everything from grounding to help calm your autonomic nervous system down, give you clarity and release some of the anxiety and the fear. There's affirmations, there's different breath works, there's different mantras, and it's pretty simple that anybody can do it. You can do it from your home, you can do it outside, whatever you need, but it's various tips and techniques that you can use and integrate immediately to calm down the anxiety, to calm down the fear, to step in and lead from your heart and step in and lead from trust and belief that everything is playing out the way it's supposed to and that you're going to be okay. And I always tell my clients that if you wanna become more grounded, you wanna wear red and black. That's, well, a, that's the colors of our show. Well, there you go. <laughs> so as a side note, if you want to become more grounded, go out and get red and or black underwear. It really works. My clients have laughed at me about that, but when they do it, it makes a huge difference. Color means something. <laughs> First thing that I like to start with, so I, I'm going to yeah. teach you this breath. Okay. And how I'm going to teach it is I'm going to stand up and turn sideways. Okay. So you can see my belly. Do I have to show my belly too? Yes. So come on up. <laughs> First, I just want you to watch. Okay. When I do this breath, all the breath is through my nose, not through my mouth. If you have a cold or you're congested, it's okay to go through the mouth. So I'll take a deep breath. I'll hold for four and you'll see me do that with my fingers. Then I'll exhale. So did you notice that my chest didn't move, but my belly did? Okay. So what I'm going to have Soka do is she's going to place her non-dominant hand on her belly. Uh, I'm right-handed, so left would be Perfect. my non-dominant. Okay. okay. And I'm going to put my hand right there. Take a deep inhale. Belly. Okay. This is perfect. She's pushing out her chest, and that's what everybody does in the first place because they're used to breathing here. We need to begin to breathe here. So whenever you're ready, deep inhale. There you go, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, and exhale slow. So this is all about breathing a very good healing way. So with this breath, it calms you down, you find clarity, and when you have clarity, you make better choices. So we're gonna sit back down again. So now I'm going to have Sokka try and do the breath when you're sitting down. And it's a really good idea to take your non-dominant hand and place it on your belly. So when you're ready, just take a deep inhale, pushing the belly out. Belly, 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 not chest. Hold it. Let's try again. Take your time. Take no rush. Good. Belly, 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 good. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. And exhale, letting the belly come in gently into the spine. And as you notice, you might see that I'm in easy pose, which is an Indian style pose, and so is Silka. If you can't sit completely in Indian pose, you can which get I can't. Right. You I'm can, very stiff. You can get blankets or blocks or pillows and you put it underneath uh -huh. so it supports the knees. That's really important. You can go half like this, half leg out. It's all about listening to your body and allowing your body to tell you what it can and can't do. If you're unclear about what an affirmation is, there are positive statements that can help you to challenge and overcome self-sabotaging and negative thoughts and your beliefs. When you repeat them often enough and believe in them, you can actually start to make positive changes. Even if you don't fully believe in them, but you know it's what you're striving for, you just fake it till you make it. So the first affirmation for the root chakra is this. I am safe, secure, and fully supported. I trust that all is well. Really powerful statement because a lot of us don't trust. 
We don't trust in the process. We don't trust in the unknown. We don't trust in people, situations, the list goes on and on. So you don't have to be in a yogic pose to say this affirmation. You can say this affirmation in bed before you get up in the morning, throughout the day, whatever it might be. If you'd like to use this affirmation, like as a meditation pose, you can sit in what's called easy pose. And if your knees have a little bit of trouble, they don't go down fully, you can always use pillows to prop your knees up for support. So you can sit in this posture if you'd like. Hands can be placed on your knees or in a cup right here. Or if you want to do a hand posture, which we call a Gigan Mudra, you can take your thumbs with the tips of your first fingers and place them here. And you can close your eyes if you like or keep them open. I am safe, secure, and fully supported. I trust that all is well. So another tip that you can do for an affirmation is what I tell my clients and what I do as well is get little sticky pads, write the affirmation on it and put it next to your bed so you see it the first thing you wake up in the morning, in your bathroom mirror so you see it again first thing in the morning, maybe on your laptop or computer, somewhere in your car. That way it's a reminder for you all the time. So step right into it, start trying the root chakra affirmation and notice what happens. So now let's talk about a grounding technique and why grounding is so important for the root chakra and for your body. Most of us walk around not being grounded, which means we can be frenetic, anxious, um, not have a lot of clarity. Nervousness goes along with it as well. That's why it's so important to begin each day and throughout your day noticing how grounded or not grounded that you are. So I'm gonna give a few tips that you can do inside your house for grounding and outside your house for grounding. So first of all, you can either get soil or sand. For today, I have some sand. So you can use any kind of cardboard box that's right here to put sand in or soil in. You can also use just a paper bag or a bucket to put your sand or your soil in. So the next thing that I'm gonna show you is what you actually do with this sand that's in this box. So now that we have our feet in the box of sand, or you may have soil, try and make sure that the sand and soil is up at least to the ankles. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna close your eyes and slowly bring your awareness down to the soles of your feet. Now, it might be a little tricky at first, and you might only get the awareness down to your knees or down to your ankles, but eventually you'll get down there. It's kind of like bringing your eyeballs all the way down to the soles of your feet. So once you do that, for 45 seconds to a minute, close your eyes, bring your awareness down as far as you can get to the soles of your feet, and just notice in that time what happens. You'll feel a pool like a magnetic pull that, that wants to bring you in, pull you further down. You will start to feel some heaviness from the waist down with that gentle, loving pull. Then you'll start to feel the nurturing, the support, the groundedness from Mother Earth. Yes, even though I'm inside with my feet in a box of sand, you will feel the pull, the groundedness from Mother Earth. So 45 seconds to 60 seconds you can start, but end up doing it from three to five minutes so you can really feel grounded. Now, you can do this outside, which I prefer better because you're right in nature, but if it's cold or it's bad weather, you can do this. Remember, you can either put sand or soil in a box, in a bucket, or just in a bag. When you go outside, socks off or socks on, whatever works for you. Bringing your awareness down to the soles of your feet, and feeling that magnetic pull, that heaviness from your waist all the way down to your feet. 45 seconds to a minute to begin. And then once you really start to feel the pull, stay in it for about three to five minutes. This is a great way for you to get grounded, nurtured, and supported by Mother Earth. So our posture for the root chakra is something called spinal flexes. And first we're going to start off sitting in easy pose. So easy pose, as you can see, is what looks like Indian style. 
So with easy pose, if your knees crunch up too far and you feel the strain, you can easily get pillows from your home and you can prop them up to any length that you need. You can either put them this way, have them smushed down, or lay it this way. That helps support the knees and helps support the legs as well. So there's a good modification for you. So spinal flexes, this exercise stimulates and stretches the lower and mid spine and brings the released kundalini energy along the path of the spine and it aids with flexibility. So now that you know that you have modifications for your knees, if you also find that for whatever reason sitting in this pose you need to sit on something, you can easily take a pillow and sit up for extra comfort. Ah, oh, that feels really good. <laughs> I think I'll keep it here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is you're gonna grasp your shins with both hands like this. As you inhale, you're gonna flex the spine forward. So it will look like this. I'm gonna inhale and flex forward. What you notice with this is when I inhale and flex forward, my neck is not going up. My neck is staying just like this. It's staying forward. You don't want it to go up when you flex. So when you inhale, let's show you again. You're flexing and your chest is coming out. You're not doing this. Your chin doesn't go up. You keep it straight. You keep it parallel. So again, as you inhale, you're going to flex the spine forward. Lead with the chest. You're leading with your heart center and your chest without lifting up the chin. So it looks like this. Good. Now as you exhale, you're gonna flex the spine back, keeping the shoulders relaxed and the head straight. And it looks like this. I inhale up and I'm gonna exhale back. Inhale up, exhale back. Notice my chin stays parallel to the floor. Inhale up, exhale back. Through this posture, you can either keep your eyes open or closed. For me, I find that closing your eyes really helps to keep you in the moment and in your body so you can feel the many openings and releases that this particular posture gives you. So you're going to continue rhythmically with the deep breaths for about one to three minutes or 108 times. If you're a beginner, just start with 60 seconds. Remember, make it easy. So let me show you what this looks like from beginning to end. And if you noticed, the way that I ended the pose is I came all the way up, I held the breath for as long as I can, and then I exhale, letting the breath out. After you're finished, you can place your hands on your knees, close your eyes, and just witness and notice what the body feels like. And that is your Kundalini Spinal Flex Pose for the Root Chakra. So now let's take a look at what foods you can use to balance and unblock the root chakra. Choosing the right foods and nutrition to balance the chakras is very important. And foods specific to the root chakra are red foods, root vegetables, and proteins. Isn't that interesting? Root vegetables for the root chakra? So please know that you know your body better than anyone else if you have a food allergy. Please do not choose foods I will be listing that activate your allergies. There are enough options on the list where you will have many other choices. So let's begin with the red foods. It probably comes as no surprise that the color of the chakras and the color of foods are inextricably linked. It's believed that eating a wide range of red fruits and vegetables are great for balancing the chakra, like strawberries, cherries, apples, pomegranates, tomatoes, and raspberries. Now looking at the root vegetables. For the root vegetables, this would be anything that grows deep within Mother Earth. This helps to keep us grounded and it embodies the energy of the root chakra. So use root vegetables like potatoes, sweet potatoes, parsnips, turnips, carrots, beetroot, onions, garlic, ginger, and turmeric. Now for the proteins. We have eggs, meats, beans, 
and nuts, which are all high protein foods that are very grounding and nourishing for the root chakra. So now you will have a better understanding of your root chakra and you have options and suggestions of how to balance, unblock, and strengthen this chakra. So what's the affirmation for the heart center? Here it is. I give and receive love unconditionally. I am deserving of love. I am created from love. I am love. So I suggest that if you're going to do it in a meditative pose, it would be really good to take your hand and place it over your heart chakra and bring your awareness down to your hand that's touching your heart chakra and say this again out loud. I give and receive love unconditionally. I am deserving of love. I am created from love. I am love. So again, you don't always have to be in the meditative pose. You can put it on stickies, put it next to your bed and your bathroom and your laptop at work, anywhere that you want to strengthen and be reminded about the unconditional love, being deserving of love, wanting love, and giving love. This is a very, very powerful chakra and one that everybody needs to strengthen and open up to a lot more. So here we are at the yogic section of our training. This is for your heart center. And I'm gonna be teaching you a meditation called a meditation for a calm heart. I love this meditation. This is the first meditation I teach all of my clients as it's easy and it does a lot. I do this meditation a lot. So just so you know, this meditation helps relieve anxiety. It strengthens your immune system. It opens up your heart and it brings clarity to all of your relationships. If you're upset at work or in a personal relationship, sit in this meditation for at least three minutes up to 15 minutes before you decide on how you want to act or speak. This meditation brings great stillness to the heart center and it gives you space to perceive and assess your relationships from a different perspective. It also strengthens your lungs and heart. So let's get to it. First, you want to sit in easy pose with a straight spine. Remember, you can always use props or rolled blankets or pillows to support your knees like this. You can lay it this way, or if you need more support, bend the pillow over so it softens your knees. Always have them handy, and what's great is you can use anything that's around the house. So now let me show you how to do the meditation for a calm heart. You're going to place your left hand over your heart center. Notice how it's, your hands parallel to the ground and your fingers are pointed to the right. You're going to take your right arm, take your first finger and your thumb and touch it together. Take that remaining three fingers and put them up straight, kind of like you're saying, okay. But you're going to put this close to your body like you're giving a pledge. So this is the hand mudras that we're going to be using. You'll be able to close your eyes and bring your awareness down to your heart center when we do this meditation. So for the breath here, I like to do a belly breath where you're going to inhale, pushing the belly button out, and then exhale, pulling the belly button in close to the spine. So that breath looks like this. Inhale. And exhale. But in this meditation, you're going to hold your breath as long as it feels comfortable without distress. So it might look like this. Now my breath, I can hold pretty long. So inhaling. And when you exhale, let all of the air out and hold that out for a while. So as we put all of this together, you'll need to know what the ending of it is. So at the very ending, you're going to end with three quick, strong breaths that looks like this. And then you'll place your hands right on your knees. So let me show you everything of how it looks.
So when you're done, place your hands on your knees. You can keep your eyes closed. And just notice how much more open your heart chakra is. And that's how you do a meditation for a calm heart. Now that we've just done meditation for the calm heart, now we're gonna move into a pose called baby pose. And first, let me say that never underestimate the value of the baby pose. This pose is great for calming the mind and soothing the nervous system. It helps the body rejuvenate and recover. It helps activate the third eye chakra and raise the vibration of sexual energy. Baby pose is great for relaxation and stress relief, and it helps to develop a humble and devotional attitude as well. This is an easy pose to come into. So let me show you how to do it. You're simply going to sit back on your heels and close your eyes. Then you're going to lean forward from the waist like this and bring your forehead to the floor. The forehead centered on the ground puts pressure on the third eye. You're going to take the arms, just let them lay gently next to the side of the body with palms up. And if you need to, if you feel like your knees are too far in, just take your knees and push them out, put your legs out a little bit further. You can readjust, leaving the forehead on the ground and just let your arms fall next to your side and breathe. If you feel like you need a prop of some kind, you can always put a pillow right here to put your head on. And in baby pose, you just breathe normally. And you can stay in baby pose as long as you like. Baby pose does so many wonderful things, so never underestimate the simplicity of baby pose. So now we're going to begin with the yogic exercises for the throat chakra. The first one that I will be teaching is shoulder shrugs. And shoulder shrugs not only work on the throat chakra, but it also balances all of the upper chakras and it opens up the hormonal gate to the higher brain centers. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to sit in easy pose. And as I've said time and time again, if you feel like your knees are strained, you just grab a pillow and put it right under to help with your knees or a rolled blanket, whatever you have around the house that can give some extra cushion. So as we're sitting in easy pose, you're going to place your hands on your knees like this. You're going to inhale and shrug the shoulders up toward the ears like this. I know it looks silly, but it does do a lot. So what happens is as you drop the shoulders down, there's a natural exhale that happens. And you're going to continue this in a very rhythmic movement for about one to two minutes. Don't get so hung up with the breath because you'll notice that when you shrug your arms up to your shoulders, the breath will be natural with the shrugs. So it looks like this. So as a, a side story, I went and taught this to a bunch of firefighters <clears throat> in a training. And it was so funny <clears throat> and cool to see as you looked out over the audience, all these firefighters sitting there doing shrug poses. It was great. So it's fun and it helps a lot. So I'm going to show you what the pose looks like from beginning to end. But let me just tell you that when you end the pose, you're going to come up with a full shrug. You're going to hold the breath as long as you can, and then you're going to exhale out and relax. So here's what the pose looks like from beginning to end. And feel free, you can either keep your eyes open or close them.
And after you let out your last long exhale, you can sit in easy pose, hands on your knees, close your eyes, and just notice what parts of your body are feeling more open and less stressful. So there you have it. You have your shoulder shrug to shrug away any stress that you're going through. So now that you've de-stressed by using the shoulder shrug, we're going to move on to something called chanting. And we're going to be chanting long satnams. So you may ask yourself, what the heck does satnam mean and why is it so darn good? So first let me tell you what it means. Sat, which is spelled S-A-T, means your truth. Nam, which is spelled N-A-M, means identity. So together, Sat Nam means your true identity, your essence, connecting with the teacher within and bowing to the divine wisdom. It's very beautiful, it's very strong. So let me just show you what we're gonna do. To begin this chanting, you can place yourself in a pose or posture that works for your body. It can be easy pose, which I've shown a lot, or rock pose, which is what I'm showing now. I like rock pose myself for this one. And just so you know, you can use this pillow right here just to support the feet. And it's a nice little cushion. So the first thing that you will do is you're gonna take a long inhale and then you're going to chant a long sat and a short nam all on the exhale. So this is what it looks like. <clears throat> And you're going to do this anywhere from 3 minutes to 11 minutes. So let me just show you one more time. And it's really nice to close your eyes because you can really feel your inner truth connecting to the essence of you and the divine wisdom from above. So let me show you one more time. So. It's strong, it's easy, it's powerful, it's connecting, and it's quite lovely. So there you have it, the long chanting of Satna. But for today, that's our teaser for oh. the root chakra. Thanks so Thanks. much, Paige. Yeah, Thanks, Thanks so much. This is Laguna. beautiful. Thanks for joining us.